Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to a Marvel Zombies uh, comparison video, I guess. Um, so what I have is we have the base game of Marvel Zombies, which was the one that was kickstarted. Um, and then we have Marvel Zombies Heroes Resistance, which was a um, smaller version retail release that came out that wasn't part of the original Kickstarter plan. Um, the big difference between the two games, and I've done separate unboxing videos for both if you like more in-depth where I show off everything, you can check those out. But the big difference is, is the core Marvel zombie game here, you play as the zombie-fied heroes, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, um, as zombies versus shield agents and, um, other, and regular superheroes. In the Heroes Resistance, you play the opposite. You play as the regular superheroes fighting off zombified heroes as well as um, regular zombies. Um, so now in the core book, or in, the, in the instruction book for the Marvel Zombie games, they constantly reference if you want to play as the heroes, because um, the game does include uh, the way to transfer a lot to the bystanders and the and the heroes and the villains to switch over to heroes mode, um, you have to have the X-Men resistance pack. The big difference there is, one, I don't think the heroes resistance was necessarily planned. Like, early on when they started designing it, it came out, like, later. It was kind of a surprise after the Kickstarter. Um, and I think the, the other big difference is, is the heroes resistance uses... Um, zombies, like regular, just regular people zombies, like a typical zombie side game would do, and they're all standees, where the X-Men set will then have um, X-Men themed zombie miniatures. It has, so instead of your walker, for like your walkers, your runners, and your brutes, they have multiple man, um, Reavers, and uh, I forgot what the third one was. Uh, but they'll have like themed characters, they are also going to be attacking. Uh, but they're miniature, so that's the big difference you're getting there. So the big question is, if you pick up this one in, in retail, now that it's coming out, um, and you already owned the Heroes Resistance, or you see that and you pick that up, what can you do with both of them? What's the difference? Um, so, again, the big thing here is the regular Marvel Zombies, you will be getting... Um, all, all miniature characters, you'll be getting full dashboards, um, all that stuff. You'll get enough stuff to play the full game. You get extra tiles. The Resistance is kind of just a smaller base game. Um, so, I'm just going to kind of go through some of the different components and show what's different. So, the tiles, or the tokens, are all going to be the same. So, if it's the doors, the spawn points, all of that stuff... Um, will be the exact same for both games. Let me grab them. So yeah, all of your exit tiles and um, spawn points and doors, all those will be the exact same. Um, I think you get the exact same amount. I think they just printed off the sheet twice. So for each one. So those are basically the exact same thing. The dice are the same. They're going to have the same ravenous teeth on there. That's nothing different there. The map tiles. For uh, the core zombie game. Uh, you will get all nine tiles. For Heroes Resistance you only get the first four. They're the exact same tiles. They're going to have the same number. You know, RRV 1 through 4. They'll have the exact same information. It's the same printed tiles. So if you buy both, you're just going to end up with a duplicate set of tiles. Which isn't too bad to start off with. Um, because then you could play side 2 here of the Daily Bugle. And you could have it lying up next to the grocery store as well. So you could actually add some extra replay value in there if you would like. Um... But yeah, you're not getting anything different. And if you later on through the Kickstarter and you've ordered the additional tile set, then you just have a third set of those ones. Which you probably don't need three sets. Um, but yeah, you're not getting anything different there. But you're getting more tiles in this one. But otherwise, they're the same. Um, <clears throat> one other big difference is the core game is you're going to have the dashboard. Which will hold your... Um, 
Hold your bystander cards here, your crate cards, whether they're zombie or superhero crates. Keep track of your health and keep track of your either hunger or superpower, depending on if you're a zombie or your hero. So they'll, you know, slide in that way. Um, or if you're a zombie, you know, they'll slide in like that. So they're very nice. Um, if you are, you get the hero's resistance, though, you instead get these little counters here. So instead of having the tracker on the bottom, you get a little counter that you have to then turn, uh, which keeps track of your your uh, experience level. Uh, but that's all. Then all the rest of the cards just kind of have to lay on the table. You will also get, if I can figure out where I put anything, to keep track of health, you get little markers like this. So if I was playing the vision, I would yellow, I would get this. Which is not nearly as nice as putting your card on here and having a little cube to move. You have to keep sliding these along. Like I have mine sleeved and they work very nice. But if you don't sleeve, you might have to run scuffing up your card a little bit. Or just if you pick up your card to read it, you know... It's, I mean, again, my sleeves are a little bit thicker, but if they're not, they might potentially fall off or slide around. So, the dashboards are definitely an upgrade um, worth getting the base set for. Now, I'm going to assume, um, I don't remember, but I'm going to assume the X-Men set might, might also come with this, but it's also an expansion, so it might not come with any more... Um, Unless you'll, I'll, I'll have to look into that quick before the end of the video. But those are that. So then, what else do we have that's different? Um, of course, the zombie one, we're going to get traits for zombies. Where the hero's resistance will get traits for heroes. Now, this is great because that means you can play... Um, you can play both versions um, with either characters. The difference is going to be, I think... The traits for the heroes, I think you only get two of each. Versus the zombie ones, you get three of each. So in the X-Men one, you're probably going to get the exact same traits as you got here. You're just going to end up with more. Because it's meant to be played as a six-player game as opposed to a four-player game. So they're going to give you extra traits to use. Um, I don't know if you're going to get any different ones or not. I'd have to wait till the X-Men one shows up. Uh, but it's also like just, yeah, flipping through there. There's one ambush there. And that looks like it where the zombie one has three. Um, you are also going to get in the core set is you'll get the spawn for all the shield agents, which are the humans that the uh, zombie heroes are fighting, and then you'll get their corresponding miniatures, uh, which look really nice, so I'm not going to pull them out right now, but if you get the X-Men one, you instead get zombies, so there's our three zombies, um, oh, Hellfire Clubs are the runners, um, oh, there's the other hero trait for a zombie, so there was at least two of them, but yeah, you'll get, uh, cards for these guys, now they're all numbered, um, Oh, they're not all numbered. So, so yeah, they're they're numbered. Some just that one had a thing hidden, so they are numbered. Um, but the difference is these are all just regular zombies. You're gonna get for this. You're gonna get like a human runner, a human walker, or a big fat thug brute guy. They're gonna have the same picture, so you can mix and match these into your regular games. You'll have you can have regular zombies running around with the other ones, or you could use these instead of the. Um, X-Men ones, if you choose to, let me scoot my camera down a bit, I have it a little bit too high. Um, yeah, so until I can get the X-Men one to confirm if these numbers match or not, or if these are separate different numbers, like, if the, if the stat numbers are the same, and they might be the exact same, they might just have a different picture on them, um... But otherwise, yeah, you could mix and match these guys in if you want to draw one of these types instead of one of the other types. But they're going to work the exact same way. Uh, but again, I don't know if the numbers are the same, but there is enough to play a game. 
Again, it's meant for a four-player game, so I don't know if there's enough. For, for six players, you just might be cycling through them a little bit quicker. Um, we got a couple more there. Double card in that one? No, it's just thick. Um, you're also going to get uh, the cards for the four zombies. Um, so you can play as, so you can fight against your four zombies. Um, the thing with the heroes, re the, sorry, the thing with the core box is you are going to get, let me jump in here, sorry. You're going to get your spawn cards to fight as heroes against zombies, or fight as zombies against heroes for all of the characters in the deck. Plus you have their, um, there it is. You have their regular cards for both. So you can play as, so all the zombie fight heroes, you can play as either as a playable character or against, and vice versa. Um, the difference, though, with the Heroes Resistance is you are just getting big cards um, for the heroes, but not for any of the villains. So the four villains in the set you can't play as, and alternatively, you only get the... I'm, like, setting things down here and forgetting where I set them. Just had a stack of those. Um, I don't know where I put them. Yeah, you're just getting the, uh, cards for... The, uh, villains to fight. Oh, I put them up in the box here. So, yeah, if you get the, if you get the, uh, resisting set, you're only gonna have heroes to play as and villains to fight against. But you will have enough stuff that you can turn around and you can take the stuff from the core game and you can play your heroes. Um, you just won't be able to convert any of the characters from the heroes resistance to the other direction, unfortunately. Um, although, it does mean you can add uh, these four zombies to the zombified versions from the core game to add ten different zombies to fight against as the heroes, and you can also add those four heroes to play with the other characters. Um, so definitely cool there. The other difference is we have bystanders. So we only get a handful of so shots. The other one you get 12. Here you're only going to get 6. But we also get one different bystander. Happy Hogan is not available in the core set. The other five characters all are. But Happy Hogan, as of right now, is exclusive. I think he's, he's a part of either the Kickstarter campaign or this one of the other sets. Um, so he will be available, I believe, for uh, other players to pick up. But right now, it's only, this card is only available. So you have one new character you can add in. But again, it's only going to be as a hero rescue, not as a zombie version uh, to eat. Um, the last, the other thing I do want to show off before we look at the character cards quick is the standees. So these are what the standees look like. Uh, so just comparing them to a shield miniature. So they're about the same height and everything, but you can see the differences. You're going to have either, so if you're playing the heroes, the resistance mode right now as a hero, you're going to have to use standees unless you have another um, zombie side game. You guys pull those zombies and use those as walkers and runners and brutes and stuff instead. And the same thing, you're going to get miniatures or standees, sorry, for all of the uh, by standards, but now if you have the core set, you can definitely just use yours for all of them again, except for Happy, who will have to be his own character. Uh, but you could summon somebody else if you really wanted to. Uh, so just wanted to point that out. The last thing we want to look at quick is the character cards. So again, if you're playing, you're gonna if you play as heroes, you're gonna have the five. The five villains to fight fight against uh, Captain America, Iron Man, Wasp, Hulk, and Captain Marvel. So these are, these are the playable ones. So if you're playing Heroes Resistance, you can shove all them back into the box. 
but now you get a fight against them, which I didn't look at their cards yet. But you can now, oop, I'm getting cool there. But now you can also play as the six heroes from the core set, Miss Marvel, Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, Thor, Spider-Man, and Black Panther. The only thing is, the Resistance set has Winter Soldier, Vision, Hulk, Wasp, and Spider-Man. So it also has six characters, but two of them overlap. We have a Spider-Man and a Black Panther in both sets. Um, but what is interesting is they have different abilities. So um, the one in the back, the sleeve one, is from the Resistance set. So this is the Resistance one, this is the core. He has a slash combo instead of a hard slash. He has combat reflexes instead of leaping charge, but his kinetic feedback stays the same. So, he gets a little bit different abilities. His vibranium claw attack stays the same. So that's kind of neat that you can then play as two different types of Black Panthers. Um, and then the same thing with Spider-Man. He has slightly, but a little bit less. He still keeps his acrobatics. Um, he keeps his white sugar and spider sense, but his heroic rescue is a web sling instead. Um, but otherwise, they're two slightly different versions. So overall, instead of actually having 12 characters between the two boxes, you only have 10. Um, but that is definitely fun there. But we can also add in the villains to fight, or the heroes to fight. Which again, like we said, we'll add Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Scarlet Witch, and Captain America. But if you recall, in the, um, let me set these guys down. In the core game, we already have a zombie Captain America and a zombie uh, Iron Man. So, again, we're not getting four new villains, four new zombies to fight. We're only getting two. Um, let me find those cards here. There we go. So yeah, we're going to get two duplicate characters. So that only gives us uh, six, seven, eight different characters. Um, now all the bystanders from both sets have the exact same stats. But this is what's also neat though. Is that the Iron Man and Captain America work as zombies to fight work a little bit different. So you could always put both in there. And... You know, when you get one, that's the one you play as. And if you happen to draw the other one, you just like, hey, it gives him an extra activation if he's still out. So the resistance set says Iron Man, he's, uh, ends his activation within a line of one, uh, range one or two with a line of sight, he attacks that zone. Um, so yeah, he's going to auto attack if he's within range. The core set instead says he can attack from farther away, and if he is attacked but not eliminated, he moves. So it works a little bit differently. And then the Captain America from the Resistance set says when his zone is attacked, um, roll one die for each successful hit, uh, plus five, cancel that hit. So he has lots of blocking damage. Versus the core set, which says Walker through the one range of him, gain one activation. So one's a defense and one's a thing. You could also play it the fact that if you draw a second one, you could just add it to their ability and then either give them double health or give them a secondary ability. So there are some little different options there. Now, as far as I know, um, those are going to be the only overlaps. Are going to be the Captain America, Iron Man, Zombies, and the Black Panther, Spider-Man heroes. Otherwise, I don't believe there's any other characters that are duplicate from, like, one set to the other. There might be variations of a character, like this Spider-Man versus, like, a different Spider-Man, like Miles Morales, or I don't remember every character that's in there. But there's no other things. Alright. So then, the very, 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 very last thing I want to show off are some of the miniatures. Because I keep hearing people say, what's the difference? The miniatures are crappier in the uh, Resistance game. That's why it's a cheaper, cheaper game. Um, I don't think they're necessarily any worse. Um, I'm trying to figure out how exactly to hold these up. So... Here are the two of them. The one on the left is 
the core game, and the one on the right is the resistance game. I don't think it's necessarily any worse. Like, the shield still looks great. Uh, you can still see scales on him. Like, maybe there's not as much of an imprint on the Hydra. They just have a little bit bigger, better base designs, because he has, like, Bucky's arm, a little bit neater pose, I guess. But, like, his leg still has a chunk taken out of it. Um, his arm still has, you know, it's missing some. Maybe it's not missing as much, but I don't think they're... Like, there's more detail in there, but I don't think they're necessarily any crappier, uh, per se. I just think they're, um, if anything, it's more of a case that they're, what's my brain looking for? The word is, they're not, they don't have as much going on, maybe. So here, again, here's the Iron Man. The left side is the core set. The right side is the resistance. So here he's in his armor, but his his mask is broke open, which is really cool. But you still see a lot of detail on his armor. It's actually cracked. Um, this one, like, his, his armor open. So, like, which one would you rather play as? I think they both actually look very fantastic. I don't have an issue with either one. Uh, I'm just trying to compare characters that we have both of. So, let's look at the Black Panthers. So, again, corset. He has the little extra tree that he's standing on versus regular. So again, there's not much. You still see his gloves and that, but he just doesn't have as much going on. But I don't think they skimped it all on quality, which is which is just my point. People keep trying to say it was like a cheaper knockoff version. It's not. It's they're all Simon miniatures. Um, they're all good. Here's the two different Spider-Men. So you got, like, which pose do you like better, I guess, you know? There's your option. And then if you bought both, lots of people talked about repainting one. So you got to repaint one to be, like, you know, a different Spider-Man or a different Spider-Suit or whatever. Um... We do have two Wasps, so we can compare the two Wasps. Now, one, of course, is a... Zombie and one's not But yeah, still all that detail in the wings there. She's sitting on the nuts, which I like um, But yeah, you can still see the detail in her costume like maybe the you know the There's not as as fine as detail on some of this stuff, but like overall I don't have any issue with it And the I got, got Doctor Strange we'll, we'll compare. We'll compare all the different ones that we have both of, as long as we're doing this. So there's a two different Doctor Stranges. One, of course, one's a hero, and he's on the tentacle, and the one's on a broken one with some tentacles creeping around it. He became a zombie. And now, you know, with the Kickstarter set and some of the expansions, we will get alternate versions of this, so I will get a... Uh, better version of the zombie zombie one um, I just don't have one yet here's a scarlet witch in the uh, each set like a sort of mimicking like a pose there but yeah like definitely still looks like the face even actually the face looks better on the resistance set the zombie one in my opinion And the last one we can compare is going to be the Hulk. Otherwise, the other ones are Vision and uh, that. So we have Zombie Hulk and Regular Hulk. I know they have the different details on the toes. He has a little, like, hazard sign. Yeah, they just, one thing they did was they cut down on the bases was the big thing. Um, oop, and there we go. Alright, so that is Marvel Zombie, um, Heroes Resistance versus the core set. So, uh, then there's missions in the back of the, oh, I didn't show that off. In the back of the core set of the zombie book, regular zombie book, the last 
couple ones are hero mode missions. Um, so they're utilizing all the tiles from the core game, but it says it requires, here it says, uh, missions require the rules and components found in the X-Men Resistance. And this is the big thing. This came in the base game. Can you use it with Heroes Resistance? Yeah, sure can. Um, it has, you have all the tokens, you have all the tiles, because you have the tiles from this set, you have all the tokens from both sets, so you're not really worried about that. Um, you have bystander cards. The only thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use the standees, or if you have other zombie miniatures from zombie side games, you can always use those as well and replace if you want the 3D ones. But none of them require any specific characters or anything that would be from the X-Men set. It just needs to have a deck of cards and the traits and all that stuff, which are in the resistance set. So you can use both. Alright, that's what I got for you guys. See you guys in the next video. Bye.